the the okay yeah uh, all the uh, the camera I use is a modern 8x10 view camera, um, but all the lenses I use are period lenses. I mean, I think the oldest is 1848, and then they go up to 1890s. Um, I mean, the ones I mainly use are in the 1870s range, 1860s. But, you know, they're all handmade lenses back in their day and have a certain look. I mean, uh, I think if you look at lens historians, they talk about Friday lenses, which are really poor quality because workers were you know, it was all handmade. And so if you got a Tuesday or a Wednesday lens, uh, they, they're actually called these things. Uh, those were the best and highest uh, optical standards because it's in the middle of the work week. But Friday, if somebody's like 95% done with the lens and it's 20 minutes to quit in time, they, and uh, it's, I guess, fairly well documented. I'm not a historian, so I don't know if this is uh, per perception or reality. But I know that I've got, you know, Dalmeyer 3B lenses, three of them, and they all three take different pictures. I mean, so uh, I guess there, there's good argument for that. So Friday lenses, yeah. So <laughs> stay away from the Friday lenses. So any other questions? Yes? I've got two questions. Yes. Right. So if you have to pull the, the dark slide. Yeah, dark slide off, you're gonna rub against the emulsion. Well, I mean, I, okay. The uh, questions were whether I use uh, cut the tin out of uh, bright out of uh, bright tin. Is that what you call? Whatever. Yeah, tin, if I cut the, uh, I I I started out cutting the tin and japanning it, which is asphaltum and Everclear, and it turns into a black substance that you coat on the plate, and of course that's very flammable. And the second time I ever coated my own plates, I had uh, an explosion at my house, uh, you know, probably operator error, but it happened. Uh, and I got a healthy respect for Everclear at that point. Uh, never had an experience with Everclear internally, but... Uh, uh, <laughs> But anyway, um, so after that, I mean, I made probably about 30 or 40 of my first plates, and they were pretty primitive. And then I found somebody online that would actually, he actually was, uh, did the wet, wet plate process, and he had a kiln, and he had a, an operation set, and he's offered to uh, make my plates for me. And I was like, great. I mean, I, I have no interest in making my own film. I have interest in making my own pictures, but nobody makes the plates these days. So, you, you know, a lot of this stuff is just piecing it together. So this guy, Tim Merritt out in California, I found Tim and man, I ordered like 400 plates from him because that was, uh, that would have taken me two months to make it nonstop. And so, uh, so he ended up making almost every plate you see on the wall. A guy, Tim Merritt made the actual black five by seven inch plate. Um, the second question was putting the plate in to a plate holder wet. I just bought a Graflex. It's a glass plate, 8 by 10 holder, not to get technical, but it was for medical photography, and I busted out the glass and, it, and then took um, plexiglass and cut a 5 by 7, well, slightly smaller 5 by 7 inch hole in it and ground it down and put my plate in there. And because a glass plate's thicker than a piece of tin, you know, you can pull the slide out and drop it in without scraping the surface of the um, of the plate. So, sorry if that's boring and technical, but <laughs> that's the answer. Yes. Are there many other photographers who work in this medium? Yeah, there. I mean, there's. I mean, it's growing in popularity all the time. Probably in 2001, when I was, you know, learning to do it. Um, there was a handful of people, and I think digital photography is a great tool, but I think photographers are interested in the tactile nature of what, at least at least older photographers, I should say, maybe some younger photographers that are real, you know, like to be punished by having to work extra hard, like the idea of getting their hands stained, smelling things and touching things and holding things. Um, but I think a lot of the digital photography has caused people to kind of 
you know, try to find something that is more meaningful, I mean, uh, as opposed to something just created on a computer. And um, I would say that there's probably 50 people I know of that are regular producers of tin types, meaning that they're working weekly or monthly in it. Uh, and there's hundreds that know how to do it. But I know a lot of them that get into it, they get all fired up, and then six months later, they're just, it's too hard. They just, you know, it's too painful and too un unpredictable uh, causes. You know, if you've had control over every aspect of digital photography, letting go of, of all of that and figuring out why things aren't working today uh, can frustrate some people, and they drop it, so. But, yes? Well, that's a tough question. I don't. I. I don't know. I've been trying to figure that out lately. She's been wanting to know for the last eight months. Uh, no, I don't know. I mean, I'm. Uh, I've been messing around with the twenty by twenty four some, and to tell you the truth, I'm not. Uh, you know, enamored with it. It's big. I don't necessarily. I've not been anybody that likes giant prints on my wall, and and I guess my first association with tin types were. These little, you know, two inch by three inch or one and a half inch by two inch objects you hold. And so the intimate nature of looking at something that close is lost at 20 by 24. So I've been having a real struggle with the scale of the increase and uh, finding something suitable to photograph with it. So, and, you know, I've, I don't know, I've got interest in doing, I guess, incorporating tin types with you know, iron sculpture and things like that. So I, I don't know, the last six or eight months has been, you know, uh, not as productive photographically, but I'm trying to find something new that I'm passionate about. And and as opposed to, I mean, I've been asked to go photograph chefs in tintype uh, for you know, a hotel chain, and I told them no, I wasn't interested. Definitely could have used the money, but I didn't want to use, I, did, I would do it digitally because that's kind of where revenue uh, is easier to justify for me. But with the tin type, I want to kind of do things that I care about as opposed to just applying a process I love to just anything that, you know, somebody will pay for. So, you know, tough question, the toughest one of the night, I'm sure. <laughs> yes. So your affinity for cowboy and your, your leaning towards art. Um, if you have to choose which way you're Well, I think I think I mean I probably won't ever stop photographing cowboys because I like to be around them. They're uh, I mean just pleasant, honest people. I mean Tom and Robert and Charles. They didn't have to. They came a long way tonight to support me, and and that means a lot. And so. And I can call, I, you know, it's not like I talk to Tom every week or any, but we talk and uh, we stay in contact when it's necessary, but we don't do it just for chitter chatter. I mean, he's got things to do, I've got things to do, but uh, so I'll probably always continue to be connected in some way just because I find uh, their culture interesting and I think healthy. Uh, I mean, I just got back from a five week trip out of the US that I didn't have my phone on for five weeks. I didn't see one person text or use a smartphone to surf the web, and I didn't have my phone on. And then I got back and to LAX and sat down uh, to have a salad at Chili's and a family, normal-looking family, not uh, no, you know not geeky techno people or or hip cool people, just a normal family uh, with their 15-year-old daughter sat next to me and. All three had iPhones, the mother playing solitaire, the dad uh, surfing the web, and I assume the girl texting her thumb was going pretty fast. And and I don't know, I just don't, uh, I don't associate th with that myself. I mean, they're missing each other, you know. Uh, I mean, there's just missing an interaction. I think, you know, uh, we've been, you know, there's a, a writer uh, in 
who lives in Wyoming, Gretel Ehrlich, uh, and she's got this incredible book called The Solace of Open Spaces. And, uh, you know, she moved there. She was uh, born and raised in Santa Barbara and then went to UCLA Film School, moved out to um, uh, Wyoming and lives out there. And she wrote the, that in that book. She's just, I mean, it's all marked up at my house with just incredible passages. But she talks about how, you know, uh, in America we fill our, uh, we we t we take our lives like a pie shell and just fill it with stuff and obscure what's really in front of us, uh, and I mean that's kind of paraphrased. But she also has uh, a quote in there about her friends asking her, "When are you going to come back? When are you going to quit hiding out in Wyoming?" And uh, she said, her response, uh, they said, "Don't you get bored?" And she said she has the opposite problem. There's so much. Uh, she can't take it all in. There's so much in front of her that she can't take it all in. And so, you know, I just, I guess I would rather spend my time around, whether it's cowboys, I mean, there's other working people, you know, farmers, miners, that kind of have a similar, similar qualities. I mean, uh, and, you know, so I'll always be in contact with this group, but, uh, but, you know, I don't know where I'll go after that. So we'll see. Maybe I'll win the lottery. <laughs> Got to start playing there. I don't know if there's anything else, but yes. Among your teachers you've had, who do you feel has influenced you the most in your reaching this point in your life of your profession? Well, you know, it's hard to say. I mean, you know, my first photography instructor, Jim Newberry, was definitely crucial because he was somebody that saw something, you know, he, I think he thought I was mentally challenged. Uh, I, actually, he tells people he thought I was mentally challenged because I was, I would never um, settle for an answer that I didn't understand. And so it was this hard-headedness as opposed to mentally challenged. And probably a lot of people that know me probably know that's accurate. Uh, but, but I think... Um, So, uh, I mean, Jim Newberry, photographically speaking, but, you know, there's a lot of other people uh, that you learn from and you evolve that aren't photographers. I mean, it's people you photograph. You know, the generosity, I guess, of people who allow you into their lives who get nothing in return, uh, but they give you access to their lives. I mean, you learn a lot from that. So, I mean, I just think there's a lot of people that kind of evolve you into who you are uh, but, you know, somebody has to kickstart you, and probably Jim Newberry was the kickstart. So, But, you know, I mean, Bill's encouragement, I mean, his his seeing uh, the Revealing Character book and the work, and and I remember vividly Steve Clark said, well, i got to take you over and meet Bill Whitliff. And so I went over and met Bill, and we started chatting, and he said, well, let's get together sometime and talk about it, um, you know, some things. Would you be interested? And I said, yeah. He said, what are you doing for lunch? <laughs> and that was like, it was 12.15, so we went across to Z Tejas, and, you know, there, so, you know, that kind of encouragement is incredible. I mean, you know, Pam Thomas and uh, Brian and Mark, their encouragement, I mean, you just kind of take all these things, and you grow, and you get energized, and, you know, so it's good. But if that's it, then thank you very much.